Hi everybody, this is Noelle from Petite Garden Centers and we're doing what's in store for November. And we're out here kind of on a misty, cool morning, but it's really a great time to plant everybody. If you were looking to install some evergreens or if you were looking to install some shade trees, still a great time to plant in fall. It's really the best time that you can get out there um, because it's so cool and so moist. That, those are two excellent conditions. The soil is still warm, so plants are gonna take off, especially trees and your evergreen shrubs are gonna root themselves very, very well. Um, so I wanted to show you some of these beautiful maples I have behind me. I first have Autumn Blaze. Now, Autumn Blaze is this beautiful um, Freeman maple. So Freeman maples are kind of a cool cross between a silver maple and a red maple and don't roll your eyes, oh my gosh, not a silver maple. But here's the thing, Freeman maples took the best qualities of both those plants and put them into Autumn Blaze. So you have a really fast growing tree, that's what they get from the silver maple, but you have the beautiful red foliage from the red maple. So Autumn Blaze is an awesome one. It is a taller shade tree, or a taller maple, I should say. So right around that like 45 feet mark. So just be aware of that. And then right next door, we actually have a shorter red maple. It's called Sun Valley. And Sun Valley, actually, is it this one? Yeah, Sun Valley. You can see the colors are a little bit different between the Autumn Blaze and Sun Valley. Um, Sun Valley has a little bit more uh, color variation on it. This is purely a red maple, but we, what we like about it in the landscape is it's a little bit shorter. So we're talking about the 30 foot mark on these plants. Both of these trees, great branchers, fast growers, um, really will fill in nicely for you. And of course, give you that awesome fall color that we're always looking for at this time of year. Actually, we're gonna keep on walking. We're gonna go over to the oaks um, because they are coloring up really nicely. But I have this other cool tree to show you. It's actually called a black gum. Um, Nissa is the botanical name for this. And this one is wildfire. And these are native uh, trees to Ohio. Um, beautiful, and it's just starting to color up. Um, these are not short trees. They are a larger shade tree, if you will. And we have them all over the metro parks in different areas in Northeast Ohio. But look at this red color that's just starting to be produced. And it kind of starts coloring from the inside and it starts coming out to the tips. So this is a great, again, great tree to add to your landscape. It is larger again. So we're talking about, you know, 40 foot um, shade tree, but they are beautiful in the fall. If we look right over here, we've got the double viburnum tree and we love viburnums in Northeast Ohio. They're really a versatile plant. You can grow them in full sun, pretty much almost full shade. They won't provide a lot of color for you if you have them in a, a deeper shady aspect, but they'll so, still survive and grow. Um, we commonly use them for like a hedgerow or something to, as like a divider between two property lines. Um, but this double file viburnum, of course, is a tree type, okay? So trunk below and then beautiful foliage and you're starting to notice that foliage color is a really nice burgundy. The double files, I really should say most of the viburnums go through lots of different color changes throughout the fall season. Um, this one's turning a really, really deep burgundy. So absolutely love it. And of course, double files are always unique because their branching kind of goes horizontally, if you will. So they're uh, kind of a really cool kind of reaching out type shrub and tree, obviously. And then the oaks are on the next one, sorry. So we have some oaks down here and these are actually pin oaks. And again, folks, if you can plant an oak tree in your yard, give them a lot of space. Cause again, we're talking about, you know, a 40, 50, 60 foot tree, um, beautiful, again, native species, but they do change wonderful colors. These are all pin oaks here. And you're noticing the oranges, the reds, the kind of those rusty yellows or golden yellows. Um, so all the way through this line. And they're just, 
They're fantastic trees. If you have some good space for them, they're awesome for wildlife and um, really, really important to the environment. Don't forget, if you are planting new trees, shade trees and so forth, you want to make sure that you invest in trunk protection for the winter, okay? So that's where these vinyl tree wraps come into play. Uh, vinyl tree wraps are very, very important. Number one, in our area, we do have a lot of deer damage and rubbing. So the vinyl tree wrap wrapped around the trunk here is gonna definitely protect your, your bark and your trunk. We don't want that to occur. The other thing that they do for newly planted trees is they actually regulate the temperature. So in the winter time, what happens is basically on a southern side of a newer tree before they develop real heavy bark is they'll start to expand in the heat during the winter, especially on that south side, and then contract. And when that happens, they start to get winter damage or fissures down the sides of that tree trunk. So the vinyl wraps help to kind of balance or regulate that temperature so you don't get that expanding and contracting and those winter cracks, okay? So these are a great investment. So everybody, I wanted to show you really quick, you know we're fans of panicle hydrangeas. We grow a lot of different varieties, but I wanted to show you the quick fire family. And this is actually little quick fire. So we're talking, you know, a three foot, not even two to three foot tall and wide uh, hydrangea, lovely white to deep pink flowers. They do have a lace cap to them. So I've always told you that, you know, lace caps are really important for pollinators because they love the true tiny little flowers that are among all those big sterile flower petals. Um, but what's cool about Quickfire that I find is probably the best fall foliage color out of all the panicle hydrangeas. Don't get me wrong, the panicle hydrangeas will change colors, mostly gold colors, a little bit of orange, but look at quick fire through here. The stems turn that bright, uh, deep, deep scarlet red to burgundy, and the foliage really turns a nice, beautiful reddish maroon color. So I love them, I think they're fabulous. Okay, great time to plant evergreens. Again, um, uh, just best time of the year to do it. We've got these beautiful blue holly. So these are gonna be your evergreen holly uh, types, broadleaf, if you will. Uh, many of them do have sharp needles, so just be aware, uh, but they make a perfect plant for foundations, hedges, um, even just a focal point plant. And the females bear those berries. So sometimes you have yellow berry, red berry more commonly, um, but they're awesome for the birds out there. So if you're really looking to attract the birds over the winter, that's a, a great plant to grow. And any of the hollies would be great for the birds. This one actually is Castle Wall. This is a variety that has um, a little bit more of a pyramidal shape to it, but you can see some of this new growth is kind of coming straight up. It is a taller variety. It's like a hedge variety, if you will, five to eight foot tall. Now, Castle Wall, if you look at it, there's no berry growth. It's the male, okay? So hollies, you need a female and a male. Male, of course, will create the berries for the female. So Castle Wall actually goes with Castle Spire, which is a little bit further down. That's the female, and you're gonna see the berries on that. So look for that. When you're shopping for hollies and you're looking for you know, some evergreen color, you wanna check out and make sure you at least have one male for your female holly bushes. The one right next door that I wanted to show you is Red Beauty. I mean, look at this. <laughs> look at this holly. Um, gorgeous holly, pyramidal shape fairly dense as far as the growth is concerned. Obviously she can be pruned and shaped, but obviously a female, deep, deep red berries. Watch out for this one. She is quite sticky, okay? She does have uh, quite a few thorns here, but we love that because the deer and the bunnies and everything else is gonna stay away from it. So check out Red Beauty. She's really fantastic. And then here, this is actually castle spire so again similar habit to castle wall but because it's the female there's some actually some uh, flowering on it occurring right now and i'll show taylor but 
when you you can identify a female holly because she has a very large pistil right in the center of her flower and it sticks up okay but she's just starting to set berries these berries are really kind of a bright green color right now but they will turn a very deep red so that'll be ready for the holidays no problem okay over here we have the juniper family so uh, again if you're looking for upright um, hedging all these varieties are going to be more upright back here this is spartan so spartan is a beautiful deep green i love junipers because they have such a great aroma to them but watch out for the winter time we always want to tell you um, when we get later into november and the soil freezes we want to make sure that we are wrapping up our junipers so you basically just take some twine and go ahead and start at the base and kind of hold the foliage back and just wrap real lightly around the plant and you can go all the way up to the top and tie it off um, and that works really, really well, especially when we get those heavy snows and wet snowfalls and it starts to bring those branches down and split the plants. Um, so it's always really good to wrap them. You can use burlap as well if you don't have twine on hand, um, but that's always a really good thing to do with your arborvitae and your upright junipers as well. So Spartans here, about 10 to 15 foot tall. We have Moon Glow, which I love this color, that silvery blue color. It's so beautiful out there. Very similar height and um, width to Spartan again. So about 10 to 15 foot tall, beautiful, beautiful foliage. We have Skyrocket. Skyrocket is gonna be the thinnest of all those upright junipers. Um, again, good blue-green color on this one, a little bit taller. So again, that 15 to 20 foot unpruned. Of course, you can prune all of them, but unpruned, it's gonna get a little bit taller and stay very, very narrow. So again, all of these juniper varieties would be great to plant right now. This is a newer evergreen that we actually brought in this year. This is Pinpoint Blue. This is actually a false cypress and beautiful, very, very soft uh, fronds here, or if you will, panicles, other needles. But look at how bright silvery blue this foliage is. Very soft, kind of has a softer look than some of the, the sharper junipers. But again, this one's gonna be a taller one, about 15 to 20 foot full grown, okay? Um, they do grow slowly on the slow side. So right now, this one would be perfect for a front door, a big front door container for the holidays. So um, beautiful blue color. And then as we keep going, I have another juniper that I wanted to show you. This is Blue Point. Blue Point has a different looking needle than some of the others. Um, I showed you Spartan, I showed you Moon Glow and Skyrocket, but Blue Point kind of has these short stubby needles, so it almost looks like a star. And if you're familiar with Blue Star Juniper, which is a real low one, this is kind of the upright look, if you will. So again, green blue color or blue green color, if you will, um, upright, real, real pointy. So just be aware, this is a good one to plant if you're having some deer issues and so forth. That, and really all the junipers do really, really nicely um, with deer problems in the area. Let's wrap around the corner. And I just wanted to show you that among the blues and the greens of the evergreens, of course, you can always try this beautiful bright gold. This is forever goldy, and I've talked about this plant before. Absolutely love it. This is a Western Arborvitae. So again, soft needled Arborvitae, but what's great about the Western is they have very, very low to no deer issues and deer browsing. So Forever Goldie's fairly slow growing, but she gets to be about eight foot tall, 10 foot tall, um, not really big. So she's perfect size for a smaller garden. Um, near your home. November is a great time to plant bulbs as well. So plenty of time. You really have time until the soil freezes solid. So lots of times I'm planting bulbs in the snow and it happens sometimes, but you can still come in, find some bulbs. They're really the greatest bang for your buck as far as really working out and being successful. So lots of times I'll tell my first time gardeners, try bulbs. You dig a hole, you throw them in, you cover them up, 
they pretty much do their thing for you. Now, don't get me wrong, lots of different varieties here. The alliums, we love. Um, so those are all of your ornamental onions, small, large varieties, all different colors. Crocus for early season blooming especially are always very nice and you never have to dig a very deep hole, usually only a couple inches deep for the crocus. Um, definitely make sure that you use your bone meal in the hole or bulb tone down in the planting hole. That's of course going to give them that fertilizer they need, um, especially for spring blooming. And out of all these accessories, all of your bulb planting tools are great, except Taylor will highly recommend the bulb auger. She used this to plant like over 200 bulbs um, this past season. So needless to say, Taylor's been uh, really, really liking the auger. So look for daffodils, um, especially when you look at your packages, folks, um, it'll tell you how deep to plant them if they're deer resistant or bunny resistant, you know, if they have a fragrance like the hyacinths, and I should mention as well, you can start to force hyacinths indoors right now so you have some blooming uh, through the winter months as well. So that's a great activity to do uh, um, in November too. And then of course, let's not forget about the snowdrops and some of the other tulips and daffodils too. So still plenty of time to plant bulbs. Now is the time to also be thinking about your house plants. Of course, cooler temperatures. We brought our house plants in for the most part. Um, some tropical plants can take a little bit more cooler weather out there for a little bit longer. But I always say when it starts to go below 45, 40 degrees, you really do want to start bringing those, those plants in. So we've got a beautiful selection of medium to low indirect lighting plants here, all different shapes and sizes. But what I'm going to tell you is all of these are coming in pristine and absolutely gorgeous. Some varieties I have never seen before. So I, I absolutely go crazy. Just remember with your house plants, when you're watering in the winter time, you're going to want to slow down on your watering maintenance. Your watering maintenance should change throughout the growing year. So needless to say, you want to keep these guys a little bit on the drier side of watering. Try bottom watering if you've never tried that before, placing the plant in a uh, drip tray and go ahead and filling the drip tray and letting the plant absorb the water is always a cool thing to do. They'll absorb as much as they need, then you discard whatever is left over. I wanted to show you this one. This is a Diefenbachia called Camouflage. Diefenbachia are a very cool house plant. Their common name is called Dumb Cane, and they really are good plants for maybe the brown thumbs out there that are not real sure about this one. But um, look at that foliage, absolutely gorgeous. Again, keeping them on the drier side of watering will do really well. And I also have Panther. And I love this one. Look at the spots and the freckles on it, the silver green uh, center veins. I mean, it's just, they're so cool. So camouflage and panther, those are both in the Diefenbachia family. And then I wanted to show you this new one. This is actually Minima. And this is a philodendron, kind of like a cut leaf philodendron, very similar to Ginny. We have Ginny. Um, when, the, when the foliage is young, it's an entire leaf, and then it will start, as it gets a little bit older, it starts to have those kind of splits into it. But really beautiful foliage. Of course, your philodendron family, your monestra family, we kind of throw them all together. Um, they're all very, very easy, low care plants. This is oblique, or sometimes called a Swiss cheese plant. Look at the holes in that foliage. So they're not necessarily split, the leaf margin stays entire, but look at that. So again, easy plants for medium to low light. Um, and again, just kind of keep them on the drier side of watering. One thing that I did want to mention though, however, is make sure that you are increasing humidity around your house plants. So again, if they're sitting on a drip tray, put a few pebbles at the bottom, fill that drip tray up with water, and as that naturally evaporates, that's going to create that humid condition around the house plants, or you can also spray mist them. This is a new Calathea forest. This is called Sanguinea. 
Um, beautiful central vein there, but look at the undersides of those leaves. So you get the idea why it's called sanguinea, that, that reddish color all through the stems and the, the bottoms of the foliage. And this one is one of Taylor's favorites. This is Beauty Star. And Beauty Star almost has like paint strokes on the foliage, light green, pink, beautiful. So Calathea, they really enjoy that um, high humidity condition, okay? So make sure, again, you're, you're increasing the humidity. And they also do very, very well if you would use distilled water or rainwater um, that you collect. They um, kind of react a little bit differently to tap water, okay? They can get dry edges and so forth. So um, try something like that. Okay, everybody, enjoy your November.